You guys know I'm a big fan of the customer service at Backscatter. It's where I buy most of my underwater camera gear and I'm an affiliate partner of theirs. At the end of December last year, I get an email from Becca at Backscatter who says, uh, hey James, it's the end of the year and you have a lump of money sitting here. Do you want a check or do you want gear? And I told her, Becca, that's like asking a drug addict if they want cash or drugs. What do you think they're gonna spend the cash on? So a couple of weeks later, a box shows up with, yes, more camera gear. It's time to explore macro underwater. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. I hope you're all doing really, really well. If you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button because we make videos at Divers Ready with one simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you the best diver you can be. Now, there are only two stages in life, growth, and death. Take it down to a cellular level, that's all life is. You're either growing or you're dying. You guys know me, you know I'm all about the growth, my knowledge and skills as a diver. I'm always looking for new things to learn. Up until now, I have never done anything with underwater macro photo or video, ever. Later this year, we're heading to Dumaguete in the Philippines underwater macro photography videography capital of the world so i need to get these skills dialed in and fast now two years ago i built out a standard wide angle rig which if you haven't seen it already we made a whole video about it i'll link up above there it's there ready to go i just need to adapt it for macro settings now i already have a macro lens that i use for shooting particularly product shots here in the studio. So I just need a few extra tools to convert my rig from wide angle into a macro powerhouse setup and the good people at Backscatter one hand to steer me right. Now in this video, I have a bit of an unboxing of my macro specific gear, then we'll build out the rig and I'll talk you through it and do some test shots here in the studio. Then let's take it diving and see what I can capture first time out. I've got a feeling that this is going to be an exercise in embracing the suck. <sighs> uh, starting at the top here, we have the mounting ball set for tripod. When you're filming macro, you really have to have a stable frame to get the shots you want because you're focusing on a very small area and any lens wobble at all is gonna create blurring and possibly kick your shot out of focus. Um, so you're gonna use a tripod. So for that, what I need uh, the ball mounts that screw into the bottom of my uh, camera housing and the tripod legs which we'll get to in just a moment but there's three of those these are the tripod legs I do believe so as you can see there there's a ball mount at the top extendable adjustable nice excellent so three of those uh, I need a macro port for my macro lens which will snap straight onto the front of my camera housing and away we go to the races so that looks very flash uh, and then I got some fun stuff I got the backscatter snoot a snoot is a funnel for light it's basically what it is you snap this end the fat end onto the uh, the light itself uh, and it directs light through a narrow beam which you can shape using a bunch of uh, different filters you can color which we'll get to in a moment oh there we go so that's the snoot right there so yeah it's just got a rubber cup on one end that can snap over the top of the light and then you have a small lens there to direct the light through and then you see that there's an actual hole here which you can see there we go and in that hole you can slide different shaped holes in order to create a different effect for the light that you're outputting so i'll demonstrate that once i've got the camera rig set up and all together uh looks like i've got some okay some mounting accessories there lanyards and so on and that will help change the size of the light dot that you're projecting through the snoot so that helps a lot with macro to isolate your subject particularly 
Small animals tend to be incredibly well camouflaged and you need to pick them out of their environment in order to take good photo and video of them. So this is gonna help greatly with that. Uh, then we have the Backscatter Remote Lighting Muck Stick. Let's uh, take this off of the packaging, show you how this works. This is a simple but really cool piece of kit and I can't wait to try it out. So basically it's a stick. I bought a stick with an eye loop on one end that you can attach a, a bolt snap to so you can clip it off onto yourself, a one inch ball mount and a sand anchor, this little wedge of rubber here. So the idea is you're out shooting and you want to, let's say I want to film this pair of scissors and my camera is placed here, but I want to light it from the back that's where you would take your muck stick, stick it in the sand behind the scissors, point the light down, and then you can have remote operated lighting if you have Bluetooth controlled lighting, or just to put a video light behind your subject or off to the side or wherever you want it. Uh, and then that stabs into the sand. The rubber anchor stops it from swiveling on you and you can just mount whatever whatever you like you want to focus on there so i could even use that in combination with the um uh mw4300 light that fits the snoot and get a light coming in from the side and have all kinds of fun and games with that so looking forward to trying that out it's a really really simple thing but a really cool idea macro photos as opposed to big animal and wreck shooting where you know you kind of are trying to capture action you're, you've got to be fast and so on. With macro, I truly believe you have more ability to be slow, deliberate, and creative in your choices of the images that you're making. So with that said, and on the subject of fun, we have a filter holder for the Snoot, flash or video light filter holder for the MW4300. So again, that just snaps straight onto the front of the light, and I can slide a filter of color in there. And then I have two sets of the filters themselves. So bold colors, pastel colors. Let's have a look at the bold colors. Again, such nice packaging from Backscatter. They always do a good job of making everything secure and easy to unpack. And inside, whole world of colored filters. So those are all of the parts. Of course, I will put my affiliate links at Backscatter to all of these products in the description of this video below if you want more detail. Let's do the build out. And of course, it is always a good idea to get some test footage on land, make sure you got your, everything is functioning properly, you got your settings dialed in. So I have my little buddy Grogu here and some fishing weights as sort of a test subject. We'll give it a couple of shots here and see how, we, how we're doing. I'm playing around with the snoot, trying to get different shapes for the light, trying to get some settings dialed in. I've always been impressed with macro photography as a discipline and the tack sharp images that some of the best in the world are able to produce of something so small whilst being underwater and managing the whole environment. But I have a feeling that now I'm trying it for the first time, my appreciation for this specific art form is only going to deepen. So we've switched out the port for the macro port and the macro lens inside, obviously. Uh, there is no focus gear, unfortunately, for the macro lens. So I'm gonna have to rely on the Panasonic's notoriously poor autofocus. So I'm at a bit of a deficit there already. Um, I've got the GoPro on the muck stick right now and I've switched out the lights for the MW4300s. Right, let's take it diving and go see what we can find. These amberjack were very curious about what I was doing down there in the sand, messing around in their house. But you can see the setup there on the tripod, uh, just uh, kind of getting my framing set up initially. So first off, I thought let's find an inanimate object 
that will be easy to just set up on and film a little bit of these coral shots here. Why is it you think these chicks are always named after inanimate objects? There's nothing inanimate about coral. Hot mama, huh? Yes! And then I found good old Mr. Reliable Arrowhead Crab. Not the most exciting creature in the world, but definitely well within the macro wheelhouse. So right now I'm just trying to work on my framing. I haven't turned any lights on. I'm just trying to get the camera in a good position. And then I use just one of the MW4300s from the side just to give some contrast lighting. And as you can see, I'm disturbing his lunch there. Everything here I'm shooting in 60 frames per second, which I can slow down to 40% speed for my 24 frames per second timeline. You see he realizes he's on camera, so he preens himself a little bit. All right, so let's dial up that f-stop number and uh, play around with the snoot a little bit. This was his cousin I found on some soft coral there. And I think the snoot does a nice job of picking him out against his background. And then it's time to play around with those color filters. So I slapped on a magenta and a little bit of yellow. Uh, this is just a wide angle GoPro shot of the setup. Uh, I took a couple of still shots. But all in all, that was a long tech dive and I got maybe five or six usable clips that I'm semi happy with. So this is a lot of trial and error guys. Uh, it's something I'm working on to get better. This is my first time out ever using a macro lens underwater. Um, so yeah, pretty mixed results. I'm not going to show you all the footage that I trashed. And then it was time to head for home. I hit my deco limit. My plan. So I'm heading back to our mooring line here. I ran across this little lionfish. I was like, okay, let's try a little bit of handheld macro. Just in the mid water there. And then as I got back to the base of the mooring line, my buddy Bobby Steele uh, pointed out an octopus that was very well entrenched down a crack in the side of the wreck. Uh, he did not want to play at all. He did not want to come out and pose with the camera. This is about the best shot I've got of him. And as you can see, he's telling me to go away. He's gonna throw some poo at me in a minute. Thanks for that. I'll take the hint. And it was time to go. And of course, as soon as you start deco, that's when the cool stuff shows up. You've got uh, no filter on your GoPro and you get this crusty old loggerhead come cruising by because you know you can't get a good shot of him. So appreciate that. Thank you ever so much, loggerhead. Cool. So what did we learn today? We learned that underwater macro videography is incredibly tricky. If it wasn't difficult, it wouldn't be worth learning. I'm looking forward to this journey. I'm looking forward to playing around with this more, taking this rig to different sites and seeing what I can capture of the itsy bitsy little critters out there. Uh, I have more plans for macro focus dives before we head out to the Philippines. So I'll share my progression with you as we go on this journey together. And I'm gonna need to get them dialed in because the Philippines trip is coming up pretty quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much as always for watching. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already and check out some of our other videos which I'll put just over there for you. My name's James. Until next week, this was your video from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often.